Hey guys, this is Lisa Listen with LisaListen.com and the blog Are You My Cousin? Well, I'm here today to talk with you about researching your common surname ancestors. You know those ancestors, the ones with the surname of Brown, Smith, White, Johnson. They can be very, very difficult to research in the records because there's so many of them. How do you know that Robert Brown in this county is your Robert Brown and not somebody else's Robert Brown. There are multiple ones out there. In the case of my family research, I was researching John White in colonial North Carolina and early in colonial Virginia. Not an easy task. In fact, I'm going to be honest with you. As a researcher, I never ever intended to research my White family. The reason is I was intimidated. It was going to be hard. It was going to be very challenging, and quite frankly, I have a lot of other re ancestors that I could be, be researching, right? We all have the other ancestors, but I, a collateral cousin contacted me a number of years ago, and we took up the challenge, and we have made significant progress on that particular surname in our family. So I wanted to share with you some of the strategies that we used, and so let's get started with that. The very first strategy you need to use when you're researching your common surname ancestors is to start at the beginning. Okay, this I know is very basic, but you would be surprised at how often people do not do this or who skip this basic step. Start at the beginning. It might be with yourself, it could be with your grandmother, it could be with your great-grandmother. Start with what you know and work back. Establish that family. <coughs> Excuse me. Establish that family line well. You're going to use the traditional research methods such as, you know, census records and deeds and wills and vital records. Those types of things are going to be what you're using and you're going to go back as far as you can and solidify that line as far back as you possibly can. In the case of the White family that we were researching, I was able to, to have a solid line back through my fourth great grandfather, John White. And it was at John White that I got stuck. As you can imagine, there were a lot of John Whites running around at that time period. So the next strategy became into play and was very important. It was to the second strategy is to thoroughly research your ancestor in that time and place. Now I spent a lot of time researching my ancestor in his time, in his place and really getting to know him. I needed to get to know him well. And how did I do that? Well, certainly I used those traditional records that got me back to that point in my tree, but then I dug deeper, okay? I dug deeper into those records to see what I could find out. I um, looked very closely at the deed records and I looked to see who was he was doing business with, who was, next, who was, who was his witness on his deed, who was he hanging out with? Um, I did dive deep at this point into the tax records so I could establish where he was from year to year to year. When did he appear in tax records? When did he disappear in tax records? What was the tax law at the time that would tell me information about him during that particular time period? That was very important. So I worked very diligently to use tax records and court records to place that ancestor, to place John White in place in time. And I actually used a timeline for this because that was very helpful. The overall goal of this strategy is certainly to rebuild your ancestor's life decade by decade, if possible. Then break it down to year by year. Then go month to month and possible day by day. If I could have, I would have determined what he had for breakfast. I wanted to know him that well. Now, why do I want to know him that well? Because when I see my John White in the records, I want to know that it's him. I need to know him so well that I recognize him. I recognize his patterns. I recognize who he did business with and who he's hanging out with. And that, that might be different than a, diff a second John White. And I'm going to recognize my guy. That's how well I needed to know him. I needed to know, be his best friend, so to speak. Okay, so the next strategy after you've really gotten to know your, your ancestor is I really want you to start to answer. The third strategy will be to research your ancestor's community, who's around him. Now, we just touched on that a little bit in the second strategy, but in this strategy, you're going to take it a little bit further. Okay, so not only in the records are you looking to see 
who witnessed a deed or who was um, living close to your ancestor, you know, who was that neighbor? Who were all the neighbors around him? Do you know what church he participated in? Were they a faith? Was he a, a, a man of faith or a woman of faith? Did they attend a church? Do you know which church that was? If you do, who was in that church? What other community members went to that church? These were his associates. Who was he doing business with? Is he appearing in court records? Is he appearing on a road crew with other men? That's going to tell you who his community was, who he was hanging out with, and who he was coming into daily contact with, knowing those guys. So just as those his associates and business partners may have been showing up in his records, he was probably showing up in theirs as well. So those are other places to go look for his for evidence of your ancestor being in a certain community and behaving in a certain way. By knowing that, as you come across your ancestor, your common surname ancestor, you're gonna to start to be able to recognize him for who he is. Again, more pieces of the puzzle as to who he was, you're gonna to start to recognize him by who he hung out with. So there's, a, there's another um, way to backdoor in to find where your ancestor might be at a certain point in time. And also to differentiate him from a different ancestor by the same name. Your fourth strategy for these common surname ancestors is to use DNA testing. I don't think this is a surprise to anybody, and so many of us have actually done this. But paper genealogy and your DNA, and your DNA testing are going to go hand in hand to help you break through some of these brick walls for the common surnames. The difference is um, sometimes it's very difficult, if impossible, to do it with just one or the other. So just paper genealogy or just DNA testing probably will make it very difficult for you to solve your brick wall. You might be able to, but typically when you hit some of these really large brick walls, you're gonna need both. You need that paper genealogy to support the DNA, DNA results, and you need the DNA results to support your paper genealogy. Now, there are some fabulous um, testing sites out there, as we know, FamilyTree, um, Ancestry.com, there's um, 23andMe, all of these, and most of these companies have their own tutorials on their site website, and I would highly encourage you to um, take advantage of their tutorials. There are also some fabulous books and workbooks out there, as well as um, webinars out there that I can certainly leave in the comment section for you to access. So I would encourage you to go ahead and do your DNA testing and start to get a little, um, gain some um, resources and learn a little bit more about how to use that um, with your paper genealogy to break these common surname ancestor brick walls. Okay, guys, I would love for you to hop over to the to blog and see more about my John White research over there. If you want to, a few more examples on researching common surnames surnames, um, or hop over to the Are You My Cousin Facebook page. Love to have you join me there and follow for any updates that might be coming up. So hope to see you there. Have a great day and best of luck.